Hello everyone, welcome to Zimbit, long time no see. And from now on, we are going to explore network automation and programmability options using Arista devices. So I haven't worked with Arista in my career and after certain changes, now I have actually encountered Arista devices and I decided to study Arista's hardware and software, understand the architecture. And I was quite impressed because Arista's EOS, which stands for Extensible Operating System, is very, very powerful and impressive. So to do this, to explore it in practical sense, I have decided to run some virtual labs on EVNG and explore it together with you. So I, I really do believe it's going to be very interesting because from what I read, Arista's EOS offers a lot of options to automate and program the Arista-based infrastructure in a very, very efficient ways. So, I mean, let's, let's just get started, right? So the first thing uh, you have to do if you also want to explore Arista, I mean, programmability and automation with Arista to be specific, you will have to find an image of EOS, any image would do. And in Arista's case, it's really, really easy to get the software image because on Arista's official website, which is arista.com, as you can see here, you can actually download the virtual image for labs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to support and under support section, we have software download. So let's just open this page. Okay. And in this page, you have to go down until you encounter this particular entry, which is VAOS lab. So these are images specifically designed for, uh, for let's say labbing purposes or also like running EOS as a virtual instance. Right. And if you maximize this entry, you will have multiple options, which are software versions. So uh, the latest version is going to be on the top, which is 4.31. It's the latest version of Arista as of now, uh, 2024, January. And we also have a boot. So a boot, if you study software architecture of Arista EOS, you will see that a boot is basically something that that initiates the booting of the device, let's say, to keep it simple, right? We'll go into details after in in next videos, but for now, just, yeah, it's a simple uh, software, let's say, which helps Arista devices to boot during the initial boot stage, right? And basically we can download these images for free. All you have to do is just have uh, an account on a profile on Arista's official website. So go ahead, just create yourself an account and then log in with this account and go to the software download section, scroll down, find VOS lab. And what you have to do is install the image itself and a boot, let's say instructions, right? So I have already downloaded two images for myself. I download 431 and 429. So let's, let's just download the other, the other one. I'm just going to show you how to, how to do it, how to download and install them on the EVNG so you can practice with them. So first, uh, let's get a boot. So for EVNG, you have to get the serial version. So I'm just going to click on it. My download has been already finished because it's very lightweight file, unlike the software image itself, which will take some time. And I already have 4.31 and 4.29. So I'm going to go ahead and install, let's say 4.27. And the exact image you need for EVNG is .vmdk extension file. All other images for device specific purposes, I mean, for hardware itself, most probably, uh, the SWIs are basically images for the hardware, for the boxes. And uh, we also have some MD5 sums and other encryption methods to verify the integrity of the file, of the image after downloading to make sure it's uh, reliable, uncorrupted. So I'm gonna go ahead and just download the .vmdk image. So it's gonna take some time as you can see. And until downloading proceeds, we'll, we have to go to EVNG's official website, which is right here. And in this website, you can download the EVNG itself. If you haven't downloaded it, all you have to do is go to download section. And here you have to find EVNG community edition because the community edition is for free, unlike the pro installation. So just find a section 
and download the ESO, no, sorry, the OVF, the OVF VM, which has an approximate size of 2.7 gigabytes. So you can download with these mirrors. I usually use Google Mirror, just download it, and then you will have to you will have to import it to your VMware workstation, maybe VirtualBox in your case, any any kind of hypervisor will do. Not actually any, from what I know, if I'm not mistaken, even she doesn't support any other hypervisor than VMware. So if you have VMware, you're good to go. So yeah, then you will have to basically just open this file. What I'm going to do now is, yeah, you will have this file, which has this kind of format, open virtualization format package, basically OVF. And you just have to click on it and open. Then it will automatically import it. Then you will just power on the virtual machine, go through initial settings, just skip everything by default, and then you will have a virtual machine ready for for the action. So I already downloaded both of them. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my power on my virtual device. So I'm going to hit power on. And until it powers on, I'm going to explain you how to transfer images to the VM, to the EVNG itself. And just to facilitate the entire process, you have you can go to documentation section right here in the EVNG official website. And if you scroll down, you, you'll see how to create images. So those are step-by-step -step instructions on how to create images for specific vendor images, uh, operating systems. So in our case, we need to go to Arista VOS switch. So, and if you open this page, you'll see that we have a guide. We have a guide that tells us how to do. So basically, as you can see, we have to download the VMDK file and the serial aboot. If you have these two files downloaded, you are good to go. So we have already completed this step. My downloading has finished. And now let's go ahead to instructions. And based on this, more or less, let's just upload the downloaded image to the EV using, for example, this software program. So I'm going to go ahead and launch my FileZilla. We can also have WinSCP if you want. In my case, FileZilla does a pretty good job, so that's pretty much enough for me. And I have to find where I have actually downloaded my images. So they're in download section. I'm going to actually move them to my folder where I store all the Arista images. So let me just go there. It should be it right here. So I'm going to just put them right here. OK, cool. So now I should be able to see them in this particular folder. Cool. So on the left side, we have my local workstation. And on the right side, we are going to connect to our VM. And there we go. This is our IP address for the VM. So 1.6. I'm going to go to FileZilla and connect to it, 1.6. Username is root, password is EV. By default, you will find this on EVNG's official page and port 22, quick connect, trust. Okay, so now on the right side, we have the file system of our EVNG VM. So I'm gonna go to the root directory and find a folder called opt or opt, then unit lab. And then add-ons, camel, yes, that's it. So this is the place, this is the path to install so-called chemo images to be able to run them and emulate them on EVNG environment. As you can see, uh, I already have two versions already installed. So if you go to this file folders, you will see that I have two files that have different name. So if you follow the instructions, you will see that to accomplish this, you have to basically convert. If you go right here, yeah, you have to convert the VMDK image to QCO2 format to be able to emulate it on EVNG. And for the a boot file, all we have to do is just rename it to CD-ROM. So not a big deal. Like let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna transfer my VMDK file right here, 4.27 version, and my newly installed boot serial right here as well. Cool. Both of them have been successfully transferred, so I'm going to create a new folder, a directory which will store 
this files and I will call them by a standard name 4.27.12 right that looks good and I am going to move both files inside I'm going to open this directory for a serial file for a boot file we have to just rename it to CD-ROM so I'm gonna do just that I will delete everything before the ESO extension and I will name it to CD-ROM and in this case, we have to convert this .vmdk file to QCO2 format. And to accomplish this, I'm going to use exactly the same command that I have on my instructions page here in EVNG web page. Now, you could basically rename it, but just to be professional and follow the guidelines, I will just repeat the same step as here. So I will just copy this command. I will establish an SSH session with my even G VM. So SSH L root and the IP address of the VM. Yes, the password is easy. We're successfully connected. As you can see, we are in uh, even G VM itself. It's a uh, it's an Ubuntu device, Ubuntu 20.04. So now let's basically copy this command, I guess. Okay, but first we have to go to this particular uh, folder where we have our 4.27. Great, as you can see, they are right here. And now I can copy the command. And all I have to do is just change the version right here to 4.27.12m.vmdk. Uh, so this command will basically convert this file and rename it to this name and convert to qcal2 format. So I will go ahead and just hit enter to accomplish this. No such file or directory because I've made a mistake. I made a mistake, that's right. I have made a mistake because I had to type 64 web. Cool. So let's just wait until it converts. Converts the file. Okay, so if you list the files, you will see that now we have the converted version. So we don't need this VMDK file anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete it. Great. And as a last step, if you follow the instructions, you will have to clean and fix permissions. And all I have to do is just run this command. I'm going to copy and paste it right here and run it. It should fix all the permissions after installation so we can successfully deploy these images. Perfect. So that's it. This is the installation of uh, Arista images on EVNG. VM and we can basically just test them now. Uh, I will just go ahead and open up my EVNG web page. Default username is admin, password is EV, sign in. As you can see, I have already a web which I set up before. So I'm going to go ahead and try to run this new version 4.27. So as you can see here, we have the CPU and RAM indicators that we can change and we should change because if you go back to EVNG's official documentation, you will see that for versions coming from 4.27 and up, you are recommended to have two physical CPU cores and the VRAM amount of 4096, which is the thing I have to do right here. And then you should be able to run it safely. I'm going to save it and I'm going to start the node. So let's, let's check it. I'm going to log in via console connection. Okay, it's booting. That's good. That's right. So let's just Wait until it boots, I guess, because I want to show you one thing. So basically, Arista devices, by default, they have ZTP enabled. And ZTP is something 
which stands for zero touch provisioning, meaning when you have in real life, when you just purchase the box, a device, and when you install it on the rack, and as soon as you connect it to your network, if you have ZTP configured, if you have a dedicated DHCP server, a web server where all the configurations, initial configurations are stored, this device will try to fetch initial configurations and maybe even software images by automatically finding those files and applying it to itself. So that's what ZTP is. It extremely facilitates provisioning and deployment of network devices from scratch, right? The first time. And all Arista devices, at least all modern Arista devices, have this feature enabled by default. And the problem with this, you have to disable it because it will not allow you to work comfortably because you will have a lot of logs popping up nonstop that CTP query initiated, searching for DHCP server, sending some DHCP options and failed to get configuration, failed to find software image, whatever. And all these logs, they will create a clutter which will disallow you to work properly on your device uh, in the lab environment. Of course, if you have ZTP enabled in your infrastructure, that's a great thing to do. You don't have to disable it. You don't have to cancel it. But in our particular case, we will have to because this is lab is just a starter lab. And probably in future, at some point, I will do ZTP. I will try to implement it in the lab. I'm not sure if it's possible, but I will just take a look at it. But for now, we have to disable it. Okay, so our booting has been successfully finished. And as you can see, zero touch messages are already appearing on our terminal. So by default, all Arista VOS images have the login, the username of admin, and there is no password. So we just have a username of admin by default. I'm gonna go to enable mode, the approach execution mode, go back to, go down to configuration mode, the level config, and this EOS instance looks like Cisco, very, very close. Uh, there are really insignificant differences. I would say like 90%, the syntax is identical to Cisco's iOS. And yeah, as, as I said, you can see that there are multiple messages have already appeared about ZTP, we're trying ZTP, failed, uh, blah, 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 but we don't need all this. So I'm just going to run this command, zero touch. Disable. Zero touch disable and hit enter. And this command will automatically initiate a reboot, right? So we have disabled ZTP. The changes are saved automatically. And after the reboot, we will not have ZTP enabled and we can work by applying manual provisioning just by a CLI, nothing else. Uh, there's also one option which is called zero touch cancel. And the difference between zero touch cancel and zero touch disable is zero touch cancel will cancel the, CP, the ZTP just for one reboot only. So on the second reboot, ZTP will be enabled again, but ZTP disable will cancel, will terminate ZTP completely until you manually enable it again. So for today's video, that's it. Uh, there is really nothing to talk more about installation of Arista VOS images on even G environment. And in the next video, we'll start by initial configuration because that's what we need. And then we'll jump into Arista's uh, APIs, VA, EOS APIs and other kind of automation options. And we'll just explore them together. I don't know anything about Arista's automation options. I mean, I know from the books I've read, from the articles I've seen that there are some great options, but I have never practiced them. I've never implemented them anywhere. So it's going to be something new for me. and. Uh, I really hope you will enjoy my upcoming videos on Arista automation and thank you for watching. See you on the next videos.